guys and welcome back to the Graceful Tangle YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to crochet the alternate dishcloth. This is a dishcloth that is really the next step up from my basic beginner dishcloth pattern which is a tutorial and pattern that I released last week. I will link it down below if you want to check it out but like I said this is the next step up so if you want something a little bit more interesting and captivating this is the tutorial for you that is still beginner friendly. I have linked the pattern that I used, which is free, down below, as well as all of the materials I used for this tutorial. Now, without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into the tutorial. Alrighty, so like I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be using We Crochet Dishy for this dishcloth. I'm using the colors Begonia for the main portion of the dishcloth, and then for my contrast color, I'm just going to be using white. So I will link this yarn down below and the other materials that I am using if you are interested in checking them out, as well as the pattern. So to get started, we are just going to get our yarn set up here. If I can find the end. <laughs> there we go. Alrighty. So first thing we're going to do is grab our size I 5.5 millimeter crochet hook or whatever size you choose to use. Gauge is not a big requirement for this project at all um, because it doesn't really matter what size your dishcloth ends up being. However, if you do want your dishcloth to be the same size as my sample will be, um, you can just check out the gauge listed in the pattern and choose whatever hook helps you match that. So first thing we're going to do is chain 27. So just yarn over and pull through. And we're going to repeat this step until we have 27 stitches. Now keep in mind you want to make your stitches pretty loose because you want your dishcloth to be straight up and down in a perfect square. You don't want it to be tight on the bottom. And if you chain too tightly, it might result in a tight, tight foundation chain that won't be able to stretch. And that's not what we want. So I have three chains. I'm going to keep chaining until I have 27. Okay, I have my 27 chains. Be sure to count and make sure you have 27 if need be. And now I am going to start row, row 1. So to start row 1, we are going to work into the third chain from the hook. So we're going to skip this very first chain, skip the second chain, work into this third chain. We're going to work two single crochet stitches into that chain. So there's one and there's two. Now we're going to start our repeat. So we're going to skip the first stitch and work into the second chain. We're going to work two single crochets into that chain. So again that is skip one chain, two single crochets into the next chain. Skip one chain, two single crochets in the next chain. Skip one chain, two single crochets in the next chain. And we're just going to repeat that until we have worked all of these stitches. Okay, so I have reached the end of my row and I worked two single crochets into that last chain. And now I'm going to start row two, which is going to be our row that we repeat for the duration of our dishcloth. So we are going to chain two and turn. Now remember, this chain two does not count as a stitch. This is simply our turning chain and it will allow our edges to remain nice and straight all throughout our dishcloth. So this is not counted as a stitch. We do not work into this chain two space. Again, it is simply a turning chain. So we are going to skip the very first stitch, which is our very last single crochet from row one. And then we're going to work two single crochets into the next stitch. And we're going to repeat that all the way across again. So skip one stitch, two single crochets in the next stitch. Skip one stitch, two single crochets in the next stitch. Skip one stitch, 
two single crochets in the next stitch and so on and so forth. You simply repeat this step all the way across. Skip one, two single crochets in the next. Skip one, two single crochets in the next. All the way across. And after a while, you can really set into a rhythm with this pattern. I really love the way that um, this stitch pattern looks and how simple it is. It's just a little bit different than like a standard single crochet dishcloth provides a little bit more interest both to the eye and the person who is making it and i really really like it so i'm almost to the end here Whoop. well let's pull through that stitch correctly there we go <laughs> that might help me okay now again i'm just going to skip this stitch and work into this last stitch here now, just like for every chain two, this um, chain two that we skipped at the beginning of row one also does not count as a stitch. That is a turning chain. So even though it definitely looks like a stitch, I completely understand that. We are not going to work into it. Okay, and that is the end of row two. And we're just going to repeat that row until your dishcloth is a square. So again, that's chain two and turn, skip one stitch work two single crochets into the next stitch, skip one stitch, two single crochets in the next stitch. And we're just going to repeat this row until our dishcloth is a square. Now, if you have matched gauge according to the pattern, you will work 27 total rows. Um, if you did not match gauge, there was nothing to worry about, or if you decided to chain more stitches than I did, Again, there's also nothing to worry about. Simply work until your um, crochet piece measures a square. Or if it doesn't, if you don't want it to measure a square, it's totally up to you. But for most dishcloths, you would like them to be a square. So I'm going to continue repeating row two until I have 27 total rows. And then I will meet you back here and I'll show you how to finish off and apply our finishing border. So I'm going to go keep crocheting and I will meet you back here. Alrighty, so I have finished my 27 rows and now I'm ready to begin single crocheting around the entire dishcloth for our last step. So I have cut my main color and I'm going to be using a contrast color for this step. However, if you wanted to, you could just leave your main color attached and um, just start at this corner and single crochet all around in your main color. Whatever look you're going for would be super pretty. So I have decided to use a contrast color. I'm using white and I have gone ahead and cut my main color. So I'm just going to finish this off by pulling that stitch through and pulling it nice and snug. And now I'm going to join my main color to any stitch along this last row. So I'm going to start about here and I'm just going to grab my main, my um, contrast color and lay it over my hook like so and pull through and then I'm just going to chain one to lock that stitch in. And now I'm ready to begin crocheting. So I'm going to insert my hook into that same stitch and I'm going to go through both the stitch and the tail so that I can weave it in as I go. And I'm just going to start crocheting. You're going to place one single crochet in each stitch along the top row here. Just like so. And you're going to continue crocheting until you reach the corner. So I'm just going to keep crocheting in all of these stitches along this row until I reach the corner. And I'm almost there. Alrighty, so here is my corner. Now I'm going to place three single crochets in this stitch. So I placed one in the last stitch here. Now I'm going to place two more to round that corner out. And again, I'm just going to go through both the tail and the stitch so that I can weave it in as I go. And there we go. We have worked three single crochets and now that corner is nice and rounded. Now for the sides, we're going to work one single crochet per row. 
So for one of those stitches, it's going to be worked into the chain two space that we created at the beginning of every row. For the other two, well, for the other stitch, we are going to work into the last single crochet of the row. And that's going to make a little more sense as you begin crocheting. Um, but for right now, I'm going to insert my hook into this stitch and work a single crochet. And then I'm going to insert my hook into the next stitch. Again, work a single crochet. And I'm just going to do that all the way across, placing one single crochet per row. Okay, I am to my next corner, which also is our very first chain, and I'm going to work three single crochets into that stitch to round that corner. And then I'm going to work one single crochet in each chain. Now, this can be just a little bit tricky because we didn't work in every single chain. If you remember, we skipped one chain and then worked two single crochets in the chain after that. So some of these stitches can be a little bit tight. If you prefer, there are two ways to do this. You could either work a single crochet into this stitch where we placed our single crochets, and then work a single crochet in between those two stitches, and that'll be the same as single crocheting in each chain. Or you could work two single crochets in between each set of single crochets. I'm going to show you both ways so that you can find whichever one you prefer. So I've rounded off my corner. Right here is a skipped stitch. So I'm going to insert my hook in between those two single crochet spots and work a single crochet into that. And then I'm going to work a single crochet into this stitch where we placed our two single crochets. So you could continue with that method all the way across. Or, let me rip back those three stitches here. You could work two single crochets in between each set of two single crochets. So I place two here, I place two here, I could work two single crochets in between those two spots. And then again, I place two here, I place two here, I could work a single crochet in between those two spots. So you can just do whichever method you prefer. Um, I personally like the first method, which is single crocheting in between each single crochet stitch and then in each single crochet just because I think it matches the top a little bit closer. Um, so I placed one in that stitch right there. Now I'm going to place one in the next stitch, which is where I placed my single crochets. And then I'm going to work in between those two stitches into that stitch in between and into. And I'm going to repeat that all the way until I reach my next corner. Alrighty, I am to my next corner, so I'm just going to work three single crochets into that. And then I'm going to repeat the same steps I did on the opposite side to this side, which is just one single crochet per row. So I'm just going to do that all the way up. Alrighty, I'm just to my last corner here, which is my chain two space that I worked on the very last row. So I'm going to treat that as my corner and work three single crochets into it. And then I'm just going to single crochet in each stitch across. Now I'm going to skip this very first stitch here because I treated the chain two as a stitch. You could also just skip the chain two and work into this very first single crochet, but I wouldn't recommend working in both because if you do that, it could result in a corner that's a little bit higher up because there's a lot of stitches there. So I'm just going to skip that first stitch and work into the next. Just like that. And then I'm just going to work in each stitch across until I reach my beginning of round. All 
Alrighty, I am back to my very first stitch here. And to finish off my dishcloth, I am just going to insert my hook into that stitch. Run over, pull through, and then pull through that second loop to create a slip stitch. And then I will just cut my yarn. And I will pull that through. And then we will just weave in our ends. And there is our finished dishcloth. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it helpful. I loved crocheting this dishcloth along with you guys and I am so excited to use mine to wash all those dishes. Now you can of course use this more as a washcloth too. You can wash yourself, keep it in the shower, and I just really love making these and everybody else loves them as well. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, be sure to do that. And don't forget to send me an email or leave a comment below telling me if you enjoyed this tutorial and what other tutorials you would like to see from me in the future. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you all next time. Bye!